Hello, listeners. Welcome to the Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon podcast. Today, we have a special guest with us. So the reason why I reached out to him, in Singapore, there are thousands of CEOs. And he is one that really shares his wisdom on LinkedIn. He has the series of leadership in, in Metaverse. And when I reached out to him, and if you follow him on LinkedIn, there's a lot of content. He is one that takes the time to share his wisdom and insights on LinkedIn. So we have Dr. Timothy Lowe here with us. He's the CEO of Farrer Park Hospital. And from what I hear, I've not been to Farrer Park Hospital. From what I hear, it is a state-of-the-art hospital in Singapore. So besides that, uh, Dr. Timothy Lowe has over 28 years of experience in the healthcare industry in Asia Pacific. And also he has authored a book right, called The Triangulation of Success. And just a bit about the Farrer Park Hospital as well. Um, the Farrer Park Hospital is a private tertiary healthcare institute uh, set to offer a fresh approach um, to medical treatment. And uh, as I said, it was it is a state of the art. So it says here, uh, it is a 20-story building connection which houses a hotel, a spa, and an oven link. Um, so uh, Dr. Timothy, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me uh, on the show, Bob. Yes, Dr. Timothy, so as I start the podcast, I ask all my guests this question. What is your favorite Kung Fu movie? Well, um, thinking back, uh, the, the first Kung Fu movie that sort of uh, gave me a good impression and for a long time is the uh, is a TV series called Kung Fu. So you know how old I am because uh, that was... Uh, that was a long time ago. I think uh, the actor was uh, David Carradine. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know whether you have seen the uh, TV series or not, but uh, David Carradine was, uh, was an American who went to, I think the Shaolin Temple to learn Kung Fu. And he is this master uh, who taught him many things besides uh, martial arts. So he always goes to the master, master and says, Master, Master, I have a question. And the master calls him Grasshopper. Yeah, so there's a lot of philosophy in, um, in the master's uh, conversation with uh, David Carradine uh, or Grasshopper. And of course, within the show itself, it's uh, every series is... is is a uh, it's a story on his own, but there are philosophies. Whenever he goes, master, master, and the master goes, grasshopper, you know, then philosophy comes out. So that has uh, given me a very good uh, impression for a long time. Thank you, Doctor Timothy. This is the first time I don't know of a series or com or movie that was mentioned on the show. But I'll definitely check it out. And I like what you said. It's about the principles. It's about the wisdom in the movie, not just the fighting. Uh, yeah. So I find that when I was doing research for this podcast, watching your previous interviews and your previous panel interviews on on YouTube, etc., I really like the way you speak and the way how you you express and also how you articulate information. So thank you for, for that as well. So I, I believe I didn't do justice about talking about Farrell Park Hospital. So I want to hear from you yourself. I've not been, but whenever I talk to healthcare professionals, so I'm based in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia, wherever I talk to healthcare professionals in KL, they say, oh, they have good reviews and they say, oh, this is one of the best hospitals in Singapore, if not the region. So, Dr. Timothy, can you tell us more about Farrer Park Hospital? Okay, just very brief uh, intro. Farrer Park Hospital is a private hospital, but it is built in a, in a model which is uh, very much different. We have a five-star hotel uh, called One Farrer Hotel, and then the uh, Farrer Park Hospital and the Farrer Park Medical Center. So, it's like a three-in-one you know, you drink, you drink three-in-one coffee, right? So it's a three-in-one package into one building or the campus itself. Um, the integration is in this fashion. Um, it is not hotel, hospital, and medical center, right? It is integrated in this fashion like Kuei Lapis. 
Mm. Right? Mm. Yeah, it's like Kuei Lapis. So the integration is seamless. So from the hotel, this is a business hotel actually, um, but it, it also can, can be uh, uh, hosted um, by caregivers. Let's say if the patients are from overseas, they stay in a hospital, their caregivers can stay in a hotel. And between the hotel and the uh, hospital, there is an access pass where you, know, you can just walk within the building to the hospital uh, within uh, one, two minutes and into the specialist medical center, which is another one, two minutes, right? So this is built such that it is capturing medical tourism. At the same time, the decreased cost. Why do I say decreased cost? It's because when patients are well enough to be discharged, but they still need to see their doctors, they can actually stay in the hotel. It's cheaper to, to lie on a hotel bed than to lie on a hospital bed. And then every day or every, every other day, you can see your specialist within the building itself from the hotel to the specialist uh, medical center, right? So it is, it is integrated in that fashion. And within the building itself, from the outside, you look at it, it's a building, mm. but we have 15 gardens within the building itself, uh, including an urban farm. So we have spices and fruits and all that that is planted on this urban farm where patients and caregivers can sort of uh, meander and walk around. Why 15 gardens? Is because we don't want people to crowd into a certain area. We want to disperse them into the gardens. And this is what we call biophilic uh, architecture. Biophilic meaning bringing nature to humans because that is part of the healing process, uh, nature. Um, we also have art. We have uh, more than 700 pieces of uh, original art within the building itself. And we are one of the most um, you know, contemporary art collectors within uh, an entity because art is also part of healing. A very unique piece. We support um, regional artists, Southeast Asia regional artists, and this is drawn specially for, for this building itself. So there is no second piece elsewhere. Right. So art, nature, we bring them to humans and it's part of rest and healing. Wow, sounds like a, a great, uh, wonderful place to be. And, and you've been in this hospital for a number of years now as the CEO. And um, the reason why I reached out to you as well is because you have a newsletter called the Leadership in the Metaverse Era, right? So, so why do you name it in this way? Like I, I would have named it Leadership in, in Farrah Park or Leadership in, in Farrah Hospital, but you name it Leadership in the Metaverse Era. So uh, tell us more about the, this series that you've, been, you've done on LinkedIn. Right. I, I chose that because... Um... I want to reach out to uh, more people and outside the healthcare uh, arena also. Mm. And, and that term metaverse sort of um, came when uh, meta was sort of uh, being broached. Metaverse, you know, the digital twin. Um, and th this is the new, this is the next era where we need to go into, right? Um, a lot of uh, virtual reality, a lot of um, uh, things that we can do in the virtual world mm. um, to, to show and simulate the actual world, uh, basically is to practice, let's say for doctors, for example, right? Mm. So for doctors, they can actually do their surgery using virtual reality to practice um, you know their, their surgical skills and, and things that happen during surgery uh, they, they can use uh, um, virtual reality to practice and uh, even CPR the cardiopulmonary resuscitation there is a company that is also using virtual reality to train to train people so in terms of the training area um, virtual reality is one area that can be done anywhere in the world. You can train people, um, especially during the pandemic, 
uh, times where people are working from home and you can be anywhere and still have that training. So Meta, Metaverse. Meta, I mean, now it's Facebook, right? They, 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 they use <laughs> Meta. Yeah, um, Metaverse to tap on the new environment that we are in and we probably have to embrace it. I guess over time, new terminologies will come up. Uh, but this is, just a, this is just a platform that I use to share my thoughts, to share um, what works, what doesn't work that well in my life, in my leadership journey. And uh, you know, I hope that uh, people can uh, use it, should, should it fit them. Some, sometimes it resonates at a certain point in their life. And uh, that, that's where I can add value and where I feel that it, it is satisfaction that I gain, that I can make a difference in people's lives. Thank you, Dr. Timothy. And yeah, I really like what you share. And it's not um, in, in this series of leadership, less, uh, leadership in the metaverse era. Um, it's not like full-blown articles, but it is like nuggets of uh, wisdom that you share. And um, while doing research for this podcast, and I listen to a lot of media or interviews you've done, it's mostly, of course, during the COVID era that we were stuck at home <laughs> and you've done a lot of podcast interviews. And, and one thing I really like in, is that you shared about emotional intelligence a lot. As a leader, what I summarized from all the interviews you've done, you, you really really emphasize on the on the importance of emotional intelligence and also empathy and i can see that in the way you speak and also the lessons that you shared as well so from over 38 years of <laughs> your experience right so it's it's about, it's, a, it's a long time i know uh, over 38 years like what are some of the lessons included in your newsletter that you like to share uh, so any of the lessons in leadership that like, you, that you like to share as well yeah, you know, in, in, in leadership, you have to, oh, I, brother, I, I, I believe that uh, we are here to serve and uh, not to be served. So as leaders, we want to serve our people. We want to serve our customers. We want to be able to make a difference in people's lives. So serving others um, with the principle of uh, servant leadership. Uh, is uh, important, and um, if you if you look at uh, Southwest Airlines, for example, in the U.S., their CEO inculcates servant leadership at that point in time when he was when he was uh, serving servant leadership to all the airline um, employees. That's why Southwest Airlines was very successful, although they are not a very big airline, but it was a very successful airline because the CEO advocates servant leadership. And servant leadership is something that we either embrace it or we feel that we cannot. Because the word servant is, to some people, it's, it's like, why should I be a servant, right? But in leadership, it's more like serving others, right? In, in any industry, there's always the customer. Your customers can be your staff too, right? So if you are there to take care of your staff, the staff will take care of the business. And subsequently, profitability will, will come in. Profits will come in, right? So serving others is important. Emotional uh, intelligence, as, as you are saying, there are many people who are very intelligent. IQ is very high, but they may not have a high EQ, right? E emotional uh, intelligence. And we need to have both. Having a high EQ with a low EQ, you may not be able to hold your people. The people may not be able to um, embrace uh, the organization's vision and mission. If it's just 
IQ, right? So IQ, EQ has to come into play in our lives. It is in anything we face, especially during illness, right? All of us at some point in time will, will fall ill, right? Whether we have serious illness or not so serious illness, flu, every one of us will have flu, right? So when we have flu, fever, cough, running nose, the body is not so comfortable. We want some empathy from, from people around us, right? From the bosses, it's kind of like, okay, please uh, stay at home and rest. From your loved ones around you, it's like, I need some pampering or leave me alone, just let me sleep. So you need, all of us need uh, that uh, empathy from people because when we give empathy uh, to others, others will feel, can feel it, right? And uh, that, that's something that we need to, to give and to be as human beings. Uh, empathy, EQ. So that's important. So a balance of EQ and IQ um, is important. As in any business, I always say high tech, high touch. Right? High tech, high touch together. High tech because we need to put technology in, in our business to, to help in productivity and uh, cutting down on manual work. The high tech. And then high touch. Because tech alone is not enough. If you, if you have high tech, high touch, the touch point, the empathy, the, uh, the EQ, that makes things very human, very humane um, in any industry. Thank you, Dr. Timothy. That is so gold. Uh, so in today's technology, and especially with all the metaverse, we always neglect the, the high touch. Uh, there is the high involvement and empathy and emotional intelligence that you mentioned just now. What I really liked just now was that you mentioned servant leadership. And it's not a common word right now <laughs> used in, in <laughs> leadership. Uh, in leadership circles, it's more like, you know, like persuasion, you know, or influence. Uh, these are the words that are commonly used. But I like the word servant leadership. So, Dr. May I ask that, how do you practice servant leadership yourself as the CEO and board director of Ferrell Park Hospital? How do you practice this servant leadership? Well, I put people first, right? So, the, 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 doc, the specialists are our customers and the patients are also our customers. And uh, I'm, I put myself in their shoes. And to, to understand that, uh, you know, what they are facing. Patients are anxious because, of course, they are ill, right? Doctors are impatient because they want to get things done fast for their patients. So we need to put ourselves in the patient's shoes to empathize with their anxiety. We need to put ourselves in the doctor's shoes to ensure that we make things uh, or we facilitate the process of what they need to do for their patients. Right, so this is part of service. It's like I'm serving you. And um, that, that's on the ground, right? Staff, employees, they need to feel that we care for them, that uh, they matter to us, right? And their development and their well being nowadays, especially their mental well being, is important because a lot of people are burnt out. Um, after the pandemic, during the pandemic and after the pandemic. So we need to also understand uh, where they are coming from and also serve them so that they can serve the doctors and they can serve the patients. So whatever philosophy that I put across to uh, the staff, whom I call my colleagues, uh, it's, it's usually something that is some something that can be applied both at work and at home, in their own home, when they are with their family, when, when they are with their loved ones, they can also apply, apply that. So for, for example, um, I use the, the word heat, H-E-A-T, 
heat, right? Heat strategy. So whenever we're facing with something, some issues, some challenges, we hear them out, H, right? We empathize with them, E, put ourselves in their shoes, right? H, E, A, T. A, we take action. And T, if we can't, we will transfer the action to the relevant parties, we, which is, if it is not something that you can do, make sure that someone else can help them. So the heat strategy is, is something that they can apply anywhere, whether they're at home with their kids or you know, with their parents or with their customers at, at work. Thank you, Dr. Timothy. I love that acronym, H-E-A-T as well. Thank you so much. And I believe that is so easy to apply. And as you say, apply it at home and at work as well. And as of today, I just checked and on, on in Farrah Park Hospital, you have 300 over employees. So I imagine that is not an easy task. And uh, that is something that is commendable as well. Um, so uh, next question I have is more on the book. Uh, a, a couple of years ago, you, you published a book and it's called The Triangulation of Success. And it is a book from your experience uh, of your experience in the medical industry. So can you share with us a bit about the book as well? Okay. Um, the book was uh, published in 2021. I spent like two years writing the book during the pandemic time and uh, sharing management philosophies and principles and practical solutions, as well as leadership. So management and leadership uh, principles, and practical uh, know-how and outcomes. Uh, basically sharing what I did in one hospital previously called Glen Eagles Hospital. I think in Malaysia now you have uh, Glen Eagles too. That time I was running Glen Eagles Hospital in Singapore and Farrah Park Hospital in, in Singapore. So what management and leadership um, know-how and approaches is in that book, but it can also apply to any other organization or industry because the principles are, are there. And uh, it's something which is um, true it's something which is practical. It's something which I have done and put it in the book. Because how I ran Glen Eagles Hospital, uh, which is a, at that time was a 30-year-old hospital. That means it's a very mature hospital. And how I ran a brand new hospital, Farrah Hospital, they are actually very different. I tried to transpose what I did in Glen Eagles to Farrah Park. And some things didn't work. Although both are hospi private hospitals. But some approaches didn't work. Right? So what worked and what didn't work is in the book. And Glen Eagles being a mature hospital and Farrah Park being a brand new hospital with people coming from all over the place. Because when you're new, you're hiring all the new people from different companies bringing their own cultures their experiences. So certain things that you want to do or run it in a new establishment may not work if you think that it worked in a mature environment where there's already a culture, people have been there for you know, 10, 20 years. Uh, so it's, it's actually very different in terms of running a brand new establishment and a mature establishment, although they are both healthcare and they are both hospitals. Thank you, Dr. Timothy. Yes, so it's called The Triangulation of Success. So it's basically, I, I imagine the book and from the summary, it is a lot of triangles, a lot of principles in the, the shape of triangles. Am I right, Dr. Timothy? Yes. Yeah, so okay. there's... A, yeah, so you can get the book at uh, www.thetriangulationofsuccess.com. Of course, you know, follow 
Dr. Timothy on LinkedIn and you can check out the book. Um, next question I will have is the buzzword of the year. Uh, so the buzzword of the year is, of course, AI. So in, in your previous interviews, I also heard that you say, you know, of how AI can play a role in healthcare. And today you also mentioned about metaverse, right? So mm -hmm. uh, as of today in 2023, uh, what do you think AI can play a role in healthcare? Yes, uh, generative AI is the, the uh, in thing now. It's not only a buzzword, but it is being uh, practiced. So for example, in uh, the electronic health records of the hospital, um, new systems are incorporating chat GPT into the electronic health uh, records uh, hospital system. What does chat GPT do? For example, the doctor is seeing a patient and he's talking uh, to the patient and getting the history and uh, the other things, uh, information from the patient. After which, the doctor has to type into the computer and it takes time because he has to talk and he has to consolidate, summarize and type into the system. What ChatGPT does is while the doctor is chatting with the patient, gathering information, ChatGPT captures the conversation, summarizes it and within a few seconds presents the, uh, the summary to the doctor, the doctor just checks and uh, corrects it if it's uh, if it needs amendment. If not, that's it. So it cuts out a lot of time, and that's a pain point for doctors. It also causes a lot of doctors to burn out due to that worldwide. Not only not only in uh, in Singapore or Malaysia, it's worldwide burnout pain point. Right. I'm just giving you one example of gener generative AI. Uh, chat GPT used in the electronic health records. The other areas where AI can make a difference, uh, for example, in Fair Park, we're using AI colonoscopy. So colonoscopy is putting a scope into the colon um, to check for any polyps. Polyps can lead to cancer, uh, colon cancer. And it's one of the highest, uh, uh, Asia has one of the highest colon cancer um, incidences. So it's getting younger and younger. Previously, I do see patients in their 50s and 60s getting colon cancer. Now we see patients in their mid-30s already getting colon cancer. So we don't want to miss any polyps. So AI colonoscopy used in Farrah Park Hospital gives the doctor, as the doctor is doing the scope, within less than a second, a green box will pop up and tells the doctor, look here, you may have missed something, right? It may be a flat polyp, which the doctor has missed, or because of the, the uh, feces covering it, the doctor may not have seen it. So the AI will search and alert the doctor, look here. So AI colonoscopy is being, being done and used in Farapa. The other area, as you know, that Asia is the fastest aging population in the world. So people are aging very, very quickly. So geriatric uh, medicine is coming to play and dementia, right? Early dementia uh, is difficult to pick up. People can get a bit more forgetful. Um, you know, our parents or our grandparents may start to get that. And early dementia, actually, if we pick up early, there are treatments now available, especially for uh, Alzheimer's disease, which uh, the FDA has just approved uh, two, two drugs for early, Alzheimer's, early Alzheimer's disease. So to pick up early dementia, we're using AI-assisted MRI to look at the brain, to look, look at the brain volume, as well as we are using AI uh, cognitive tests because early dementia, our uh, cognitive function comes down. So using the AI cognitive tests, we can pick up early dementia early. So basically picking up dementia early 
so that we can treat and delay the full-blown uh, disease from uh, happening too soon. So these are AI in actual practice happening uh, in the uh, diagnostic area. Thank you, Dr. Timothy. That is uh, very, very important. Thank you for sharing the applications of AI. I, I personally have done a colonoscopy, so I know what you're talking about, about the collips. Uh, so you have to remove it and you have to do a colonoscopy uh, every five years, I believe so. Uh, so that, that is very important. And I, I, I believe from what I hear is that AI is very good um, because they like this to say that AI will take over our jobs. No, but it is assisting us, you know, helping us become better doctors, helping us have better diagnosis and not miss uh, things that we cannot see. So thank you so much for sharing. And a last question before we go. So a lot of our audience here, uh, a lot of my audience and listeners are uh, my connections and also the people on LinkedIn, right? So before we leave, uh, do you have any advice for the aspiring leaders out there on, on LinkedIn? <laughs> well, maybe just to uh, quote what my mother always uh, reminds me, you know, there are places that we can make a difference, that people value you and appreciate you, and there are places where people may not, may not uh, value you and appreciate you. So she always says, Go to where you are celebrated and not where you are tolerated. Thank you so much, Dr. Timothy. That is a very short advice, but very important. So many lessons in there as well. Something might be valued this somewhere and some something might be more valuable in certain areas as well. So thank you, Dr. Timothy, for coming on the Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon podcast. And even though it's a short time that we've, we've uh, had this interview, but there's so much gold and nuggets in there from leadership to AI um, to actually many other things as well. Um, so thank you, Dr. Timothy, for being on the show. And please connect with Dr. Timothy. Follow him. He has over uh, 30,000 uh, followers on LinkedIn. And he shares, especially in his newsletter, uh, that leadership in the metaverse era. So thank you, Dr. Timothy, for being on the show. Thank you, Bob. Thank you.